So what are the units for wavelength? Yeah. So meters? Yeah, good. We can kind of figure it out. It's a length. So it must be, uh, the standard unit should be meters. It could be measured, measured in centimeters or millimeters, but the standard unit for length is meters. However, again, maybe it's more interpretable if we think of it as meters per cycle. Because remember, this is the length it takes to go uh, from one point in the wave one complete cycle to the next point in the wave. So this is the distance that it takes to travel one complete cycle in the wave. For example, if you go from one crest to another crest, you've traveled one cycle. So sometimes it helps to think of this as meters per cycle. But remember, this is a disappearing unit. Usually people just write this as meters. Okay. Uh, so that would be our uh, lambda. So a very common question is to be given the frequency and asked for the lambda, or given the lambda and given asked for the frequency. So I put this arrow between these to show that oftentimes we have to go back and forth between these two concepts. Well, remind me, what were the units for frequency? Uh, hertz. Good. What are some other units? Um, cycle over one second. Yeah. Cycle our most interpretable units are seconds, are, sorry, sorry, cycles over seconds. Mm -hmm. Now, what were our best units for lambda? Um, meters over one cycle. Now, let's say that you multiplied these units together. What would you have left after you multiplied these? Meters per second. Because the cycles cancel. Well, what concept would be measured in meters per second? Velocity. So we just got a little formula here. Velocity equals frequency times lambda. And that's the equation that relates these two things. So over here, we can right next to this arrow write v equals f lambda. And the point is, this is the equation we use to go from this concept lambda to this concept frequency up here. So we uh, the point of the flowchart is to write down a bunch of concepts that oftentimes you have to interchange and then write the equation down that uh, takes you between them. Okay, um, usually people don't really write the wavelength in meters per cycle, but it helps us to get the, see that this equation makes sense over here. Earlier, when I first asked you for frequency, your very first guess um, was, or maybe period, your first guess was something like meters per second. Well, here's where the meters per second comes in. That's just the speed that the wave is moving. That's just the speed that the wave is moving. In that picture that I drew before, V is the speed that the wave was moving to the right, say. So V is how fast it's, so V is not how fast we're oscillating up and down. That's kind of measured by the frequency. V is how fast the wave pulses are moving to the right, say. So V would be how fast we're going from, say, here to, say, here. Okay, so that would be our V. Oftentimes when you're talking about different waves, you're talking about a bunch of different waves with the same speed. So oftentimes V is constant. Oftentimes you're talking about different waves with the same speed. Well, in that case, when the frequency is big, does that mean the wavelength is big or small? Um, small. If the V is constant. There's no way that these can always be equal to this. It kept, so if you're increasing F, you have to decrease lambda. Otherwise, they couldn't still be equal to a constant speed over here. Um, so maybe I should have said, if you're thinking about waves that are having uh, with larger frequencies than before, you must be thinking about waves with lower wavelengths than before. Otherwise, they couldn't all have the same speed. F times lambda is a constant. So if you increase F, you have to decrease lambda. So are F and lambda directly or inversely related? Yeah, when f is big, lambda is small. All right, this is a fundamental concept that comes up a lot in physics throughout both semesters. It's the same as what we saw with frequency and period. We saw that when the frequency is big, the period is small. And now we're seeing that when the frequency is big, the wavelength is also small. Um, can you explain again? So I understand when something is, so you're saying that if the velocity is constant and we change its frequency, but we have to maintain a constant velocity, that's right. what we would have. Adjust it by also yeah. adjusting the lambda. Let, let's, uh, let's look at this in a little more detail. So let's think about, say, sound waves. Okay. All right, so all sound waves have about the same speed in air. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, the speed of sound in air is, I think, 330 meters per second. Okay. Now, let's say that you're producing a sound, say, on a musical instrument. You're producing a sound. And let's say that you decide to change the frequency of that sound. How could your ear tell that you're changing the frequency? Do you know, how do we psychologically perceive the frequency of the sound? 
Uh, if, if two sounds have different frequencies, how do they sound, how do they sound different to someone? I don't know if you, if you know what the, the relationship is. What changes about the sound the way you hear it when you change the frequency? Um, I just remember that we have little fibers in that protect the emotion, mm -hmm. right? And, that's the and how do they, but how do they change when you're getting a, a larger frequency? How will it sound different? Well, it's the pitch, mm. right? And you know, a high pitch, well, so it's going, it's going from a low pitch to a high pitch. So those are the different types of pitches that you're talking about there. So, um, uh, so pitch is how, so when something sounds very high, like a child's voice, that's really because the sound wave has a high frequency. And your ear is translating that as a high pitch. Whereas if someone has a very, something sounds very low, um, like uh, a baritone's voice or something, then that's because the sound waves are oscillating at a very low frequency. So when you change the frequency of a sound wave, what you're really changing is its pitch. Because it's a sound wave, yeah. All sound waves, well, we haven't actually used that yet. But anyway, all sound waves do have the same speed. But the key point is frequency is perceived as pitch. So does a high frequency mean a high pitch or a low pitch? Um, a, a high pitch. Right. Like a child's voice. So if you have, say, a child's voice, you would know that its F value would be small. No. High. high. There we go. You know that their F value would be high. Say, uh, let's say we have, and here's an adult. Well, we know that the child's F is higher. The child is the higher frequency. So how could they still have the same speed, only if they have a lower wavelength? The only way that both the adult's sound and the child's sound can both have the same speed, according to this equation, is if when the f is bigger, the lambda has to be smaller. Okay, so all of that was just to show that f and lambda have to move inversely with each other. Okay. So um, if you have a high frequency, what does that tell you about the wavelength? Yeah. Yes, so notice that short wavelength means high pitch. Mm -hmm. So wavelength is inversely related to pitch, and frequency is directly related to pitch. So children have high frequencies and low wavelengths for the sounds that they generate. So, okay. So a high frequency would mean that it has uh, a small period. That's true. It's going to take longer for a point on the wave to get back to where it started. Now remember that the period in the wave that we were drawing, there's two different types of motion here. There's two different types of motion. There's kind of the up-down motion of the single point. The single point is moving up and down. Mm -hmm. And then the wave itself is moving to the right. Mm -hmm. Well, the period is talking about that up-down motion. Okay. The period is telling, telling us how long it takes to get back up to where you started in this picture over here. Whereas V, the velocity, is telling you how quickly the wave is moving to the right. Mm -hmm. It's telling you how quickly the crests are moving to the right. So there's two different types of speed there. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so anyway, this is an equation that gets used all the time. It's sure to come up on the exam, where you have to use this V equals F lambda. Notice all these equations are very simple. They're all small little equations. The hard part is just going from one to the other. So, okay, so. So if the period is 0.3 seconds, how would you find the wavelength? Maybe we'll just talk this out in words, or you can do it, you can do it out whichever you like. and um, lambda frequency 
oh, you know, I don't think I gave you enough information here. Um, let's say that this is a sound wave. So let's say it was a sound wave. Okay. okay. 